I'm Laura London, and this is a special video edition of Speaking of Young. Joining us today for episode 110 is clinical psychologist, translator, and Jungian analyst candidate in training, Shin Ichiro Outska in Kobe, Japan. He graduated from Keio University in Tokyo with the Faculty of Letters in 2002 and went on to graduate school to study clinical psychology with prominent Jungian analyst, Dr. Hiroshi Yokoyama. After completing the doctoral program at Konan University's Graduate School of Humanities in 2009, Dr. Otsuka worked as a clinical psychologist at a psychiatric clinic engaging in psychotherapy and counseling. In 2016, he applied for the official training program to become a Jungian analyst. For two years, he studied Jungian psychology at the International School for Analytical Psychology, known as ISAP Zurich in Switzerland. After passing the propodeuticum, he returned to Japan and started a private practice in Kobe, specializing in Jungian-oriented psychotherapy alongside his diploma candidacy with the Association of Jungian Analysts in Japan. His qualification is expected in 2023. In addition to his clinical work, Dr. Outska has translated several books into Japanese, including Jung's Dream Analysis, The Practice of Psychotherapy, and Introduction to Jungian Psychology, as well as Otto Rank's The Trauma of Birth, and Sandor Ferenc's first contributions to psychoanalysis. Today, his Japanese translation of the book Map of the Soul 7, Persona, Shadow, and Ego in the World of BTS is being released in Japan by Sogensha. The book is the fourth volume in the Map of the Soul series published by Chiron. It includes text from the first three volumes, one each on persona, shadow, and ego, written by the author of Jung's Map of the Soul, Dr. Murray Stein, along with Chiron publishers, Dr. Stephen Buser and Dr. Leonard Cruz. You can listen to our episodes with Dr. Stein about BTS by visiting the special BTS page on our website, speakingofjung.com. On that page, you'll find links to episodes on Map of the Soul Persona, The Shadow, the Ego, Map of the Soul 7, their Japanese album, Map of the Soul, The Journey, B, their speech at the United Nations, and an episode on Jung's model of typology and psychological types. This video interview is being recorded on Tuesday, May 24th, 2022, through the magic of StreamYard. Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Otska. I was pronouncing your name incorrectly this entire time, so I apologize yeah, for struggling. Uh, yeah, pronouncing you are pronouncing my name very good. Quite oh, natural. thank you, thank <laughs> you. I'm, I'm going to try not to say it too often, but it is Otska. <laughs> yes, that's it. And um, I'm so happy to be here because I am a huge fan of your program. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> so you are the quote Japanese student that Dr. Murray Stein referred to in our first episode about BTS back in 2019, that was episode 42, mm -hmm. when I asked Dr. Stein how he found out that his book, Jung's Map of the Soul, which is a classic in the field, was being sold by big hit music. Mm -hmm. You are that Japanese student. So exactly. tell us a little bit about <laughs> how you found out about it and then told Dr. Stein. Yeah, that was me. Uh, I was that <laughs> Japanese student, yeah. actually. And uh, it was my wife uh, who uh, first found out that uh, uh, the Korean translation of uh, Jung's Map of the Soul uh, is recommended on the, on the official website of BTS. And so one morning uh, she said, hey, do you know that uh, the uh, Jungian book is available on the official website of BTS? Uh, you know something about it? <laughs> I said, 
hey, wait, <laughs> what's <laughs> that BTS? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, because I have no information about knowledge about BTS yet. And uh, actually, she was a fan. He was the army of BTS at that time. Your, your wife was army? Yes. Is yes, army? Exactly. Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> so she knew uh, many things about BTS. And, and so, so I, I went to see that uh, official website and actually found that uh, one Jungian book uh, is recommended there. Um, and uh, with the automatic with the aid of automatic translation i found that uh, that the book was uh dr mari stein's a masterpiece by jung's uh, map of the soul and introduction and i was really uh, surprised and pleased so and at that time i was uh, studying at isap uh, international school of analytical psychology in zurich and an institution to train uh, Jungian analysts mm -hmm. in Switzerland. And as a part of training program, uh, I used to see uh, Dr. Stein uh, very frequently at that time. So one morning I went to see him and said, uh, do you know your book is recommended? <laughs> <laughs> on the website of a Korean pop group called BTS. Do you know something about it? And he said, what is that BTS? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just like me, we had no info, no, we had no yeah. knowledge about BTS. Same with me. Yeah. And I just want to know, when was that? What year was that? Uh, it was uh, around the uh, Christmas uh, season at uh, 2018, I believe. Okay. The end mm -hmm. of 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the end of 2018. And uh, I also told him uh, not only uh, Jung's Map of the Soul, but also the Demian by Hermann Hesse and also The Art of Loving by our psych uh, psych a psychanalyst, Eric Neumann. Uh, no, 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 uh, Eric Fromm. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, is were also recommended on the very same website too. So, uh, and Dr. Stein was, uh, yeah, seemed to impressed with it because uh, he said that these three books, including his own, uh, have a, a common uh, character, which is uh, emphasizing the importance or the meaning of being matured, the boy becoming uh, adulthood. So, the boy so becoming that, an adult. Yeah, exactly. So that's very interesting, uh, he said. And um, he also said, uh, yeah, it is wonderful that uh, such a uh, pop group, uh, quite popular amongst the younger generation, is recommending that. Uh, those kind of books mm -hmm. with deep themes, like deep psychological themes. Like that. Deep psychological themes, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and that was it. And uh, we were just uh, enjoyed that uh, <laughs> this uh, uh, news uh, coming from my wife. And so we had no uh, expectation about what we'll what would happen after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the reason why that book kind of caught your eye when you translated the, the title uh, from the Korean, because Big Hit Music was selling the Korean edition, yeah. uh, the reason why it caught your eye is because you said that that <laughs> book, quote, changed my life. Yes, exactly. Tell uh, us how. Well, um, I first uh, became interested in Jungian uh, psychology when I was uh, when I was a teenager, maybe uh, eighteen or nineteen years old. Uh, yeah, when I was a college student, and I was studying anthropology at university, but um, 
I became more interested in uh, psychology, especially clinical psychology rather than mm -hmm. anthropology. And one day I happened to uh, find uh, a book, a Jungian book at the library mm -hmm. of the university. And I was fascinated with it. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I almost decided <laughs> to become a Jungian analyst by myself because, uh, because that book impressed me so deeply and that book the book was uh Jung's map of the cell written by dr stein so yeah that's the reason why i called it which uh the book which changed my way of life yeah it changed the course of your life so instead yeah. of studying anthropology you yes, decided mm -hmm. to study uh psychology mm -hmm. and i'm very interested in every time i have an analyst on this program uh who is also a clinical psychologist mm -hmm. i'm very very interested in how why you would study clinical psychology practice clinical psychology which is not an easy thing to do mm -hmm. and um, when i was a psychology major in college they would ask us, well, do you want to go to the clinical side or do you want to go to the social side and yeah, or the mm -hmm. experimental side? And I went experimental because uh, I had a science background, too. But mm -hmm. uh, I can only imagine how difficult it is to train as a clinical psychologist and then practice as one. And so my question is, how and why did you, as a clinical psychologist, then decide to undergo additional training, which you're still undergoing, to become mm -hmm. a Jungian analyst. Oh. Why wasn't, right? So why wasn't practicing as a clinical psychologist where you wanted to stay? Why did you want to then become an analyst? Yeah, that's a very big question. <laughs> and uh, uh, maybe difficult to answer, but I, yeah. right? And, uh, you know, there are ma several there are many uh, fields of our uh, about the activities of clinical psychologists in japan not okay. only the psychotherapy a psychological test uh, community work or the preventional activities so there are lots of uh, things to do uh, for clinical psychologists in japan especially mm -hmm. after the national license has been uh, established finally uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, we became more official than before. Oh. Now we are national licensed psychologist. Okay. But uh, yeah, I needed to uh, realize that my uh, interest is rooted deeply in the field of psychotherapy, psychotherapy, personal. Yeah psychotherapy one to one face to face and as i said the very first uh, motivation to become uh, to be interested in clinical psychology was a jungian psychology book for me so jungian psychology or uh, the analytical psychology uh, has been always at the heart of my interest after uh, ever since I became a clinical psychologist. So it was quite natural for me to, uh, to decide uh, to start the specialized training at uh, uh, training to become a Jungian analyst when I get ready. And I got ready when I was uh, 35 or 36. So, <laughs> and and did you you did you seek out Dr. Stein be, in Zurich because of his book? Yes, exactly. Uh, I actually I had two options. Uh, yeah, I can go to uh, uh, I yeah, I could go to ISAP or mm -hmm. uh, Jung Institute at Kilsnacht. Right. 
Um, but the reason why I chose ISEF was uh, that uh, Dr. Stein who was working as a training and supervising analyst at ISEF. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the reason why I chose ISEF. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, shortly after that uh, you discovered that BTS's management company was selling his book on their mm -hmm. website. And that was at the end of 2018, like we said. And then at the beginning of 2019, mm -hmm. we all learned that their next album yeah. <laughs> was going to be titled Map of the Soul Persona. So yeah, tell yeah. us what the story of you learning about that and then talking about that with Dr. Stein when we first found out it was going to be titled that. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes. Actually, I appeared again in this story, <laughs> and uh, you know, I am uh, a Twitter user. Yeah. And, um, uh, through my Twitter account, uh, one uh, army, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. is a very uh, enthusiastic army in Japan, uh, told me that uh, the BTS will release the new album titled Map of the Soul Persona. And I I was surprised, of course. <laughs> and, yeah. and of course, I was also very excited to uh, tell him, I guess it was the next day, actually. <laughs> On the next, the day, next day, I went to see mm -hmm. Dr. Stein and told him, you know, uh, the BTS. That BTS will release the album called Map of the Soul Persona. And this time he was more surprised than the first time. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> well, uh, I believe he said something like this Wow, that's great. <laughs> so, so after that, uh, we, I mean, Dr. Stein and I became more and more interested in BTS and uh, started to study their former uh, activities, mm -hmm. uh, music, films. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's how we uh, became more and more interested in in BTS. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us, uh, you're in Japan, I'm here in the United States, mm -hmm. and tell us what the influence of BTS is in Japan. I mean, mm -hmm. how how well known are they? How big are they? Uh, obviously, they've grown uh, mm -hmm. since then. That was three years ago. We're talking about what happened three years yeah. ago when mm -hmm. Map of the Soul Persona came out. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I can say that uh, at least BTS is one of the most popular uh, musical uh, music group, mm -hmm. even in Japan. Um, and we have, there are plenty of uh, armies in Japan, and I believe they have an uh, original uh, uh, organization in Japan. Fans organization in mm -hmm. Japan. An army, Japan yeah. army. Yeah, yeah. Japanese so. army. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And BTS, uh, they most of their lyrics are in Korean. Um, they're starting to have more and more English lyrics, but they also record songs in Japanese and they have Japanese versions mm -hmm. of some of their popular songs. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. But I, well, I believe that uh, Japanese fans are, are enjoying the songs the song and uh, the original Korean mm -hmm. language, uh, the yeah. English language too, because, uh, you know, uh, yeah, because it, it's music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, music can go beyond their you know, national understanding. Uh, yes. By language, so... Yeah, you know, it is quite natural for the the Japanese army to enjoy the the Korean or English song, so it's okay for them. Mm -hmm. And and BTS has visited Japan many many times. Yeah, many, many times. Yeah, mm -hmm. done many concerts there. So they're they have a big presence in Japan. And exactly. I was wondering if you would make any 
comments on their presence, uh, the presence of K-pop in Japan uh, mm -hmm. from from a psychological perspective. If you, mm -hmm. if you would say a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I am not a historian or the scholar of sociology or the politics. So uh, I can say, I can't say uh, uh, something uh, political or social matters happening between Korea and Japan. But I need to say that uh, there is uh, increasingly uh, uh, bad mood or bad relationship between Korea and Japan, uh, uh, mostly based on the political or the historical or economical, economic matters. And so maybe I should say uh, it is the worst moment, uh, worst era ever since the uh, World War II ended. So it's not an um, easy time for both of us, Korea and Japan. But still, uh, as you say, the K-pop is uh, quite uh, quite popular in Japan too, uh, including my wife. <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, for example, my mother is a huge fan of uh, Korean TV programs, TV show, TV mm -hmm. dramas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she knows nothing about the history, uh, the political matters about Korea, but she she can enjoy it very much. So, uh, what I want to say is that uh, the culture, uh, including the music, uh, BTS, uh, can be the bridge. Uh, between uh, two countries, and uh, yeah, this bridge is so valuable for both of us. Mm -hmm. Music as a bridge between the two countries, yeah. And uh, going back to the lyrics, uh, now that they're uh, releasing songs in English, and mm -hmm. I only speak English fluently, I'm actually realizing that I prefer their songs in Korean, uh, they feel more authentic um, mm -hmm. that sometimes I don't know what they're saying. Um, but mm -hmm. when I do bother to translate the lyrics, I'm floored mm -hmm. at the depth of their lyrics. And so I would love it if you would share with us your experience of BTS's lyrics uh, before we, I know we need to talk about the book and, mm -hmm. and you can weave that in. Um, because I've gotten a lot of uh, pushback from listeners, not all, but, mm -hmm. but a fair number of listeners who are not understanding the connection between BTS and Jung and mm -hmm. saying that it's just a superficial relationship of, <laughs> and, and it's, it's not at all. And I love what you wrote in the translators afterward to this mm -hmm. book which we'll talk about uh, where you explain how you don't see it that way. And uh, I'd like for you to share with our listeners, uh, mm -hmm. you as a clinical psychologist and a Jungian analyst in training mm -hmm. uh, there in Japan, how you see this connection between BTS or the, I should say the incorporation of Jung's ideas mm -hmm. in BTS's music. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, well, I'd like to uh, I'd like to say that uh, you know my favorite uh, song yeah. in the map of the South Seven is Interlude Shadow. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love whole the album, of course, but yeah. I like I love it especially because uh, it is a uh, a brilliant uh, expression and understanding or incorporation, as you said, of Jungian idea or the concepts of shadow. You know, it is not so uh, difficult to understand what shadow means. 
-hmm. It's something you don't weep. That's the definition uh, of what shadow mm -hmm. is. Oh, you can say it is the content of the personal unconscious. Yeah, it's a quite a correct understanding of what shadow is. But, and also uh, you can draw, uh, you can express the image of the shadow. It's not also, uh, it's not also very difficult things to do you know you can draw the image of the you know the devil demon or the evil spirits mm -hmm. so there are many uh painters and writers who could uh understand and describe uh, the image of the shadow but this song uh, interlude uh shadow uh, express not only the image of the shadow, but also the dialogue mm -hmm. between ego and shadow, or oh, I can say sugar and his shadow. Yeah. So that's the that was most uh, impressed me uh, deeply, and um, the dialogue is a uh, is a key concept of Jungian psychology uh, as far in my understanding because it is the Jungian psychology is not about just uh, finding uh, uh, the shadow or uh, making unconscious into the conscious context that's not all about Jungian psychology yeah you know, we have uh, uh, Jung uses a particular phrase very uh, interesting uh, phrase, uh, which is objective psyche. Mm -hmm. It sounds quite a strange, <laughs> to yeah. me because yeah. uh, uh, you know normally we understand uh, the psyche as quite a subjective uh, things. So objective psyche sounds quite a uh, very strange and contradictive uh, so but this word uh, objective psyche means that we experience the uh, you know like shadow the animal animals uh, or even the self as the inner uh, figure as a the, the other person just like see in the other person in our daily life we see, meet, and fight, discuss, and sometimes uh, get uh, closer to the inner figure. So that's the meaning of this uh, objective psyche. We experience our own psyche as a, as an object. So, so as uh, an object, we can uh, we can say something to him or her. And then he can he or she can say something to us, so that makes the dialogue. That makes the dialogue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I believe that's a central, uh, essential part of Jungian understanding about our psyche. And this song, Interwood Shadow, uh, expresses this dialogue between the ego and this inner figure of objective psyche. For example, uh, you know, as you said, it is a Korean lyric, so I'm not sure if I can translate it precisely, but uh, I believe uh, the shadow, the sugar's shadow uh, told him, um, tell him, hey, is this something, is this something that you wanted you are the one who wanted to live like this, aren't you? Or, um, or you can't, um, no, 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 no. Yeah, the shadow said something like this to him and then the ego figure, I mean, the sugar yeah. uh, answered like this, I'm scared, don't let me fry, don't let me down, I'm scared. 
And then the dialogue continued, and the very at the very end of this uh, their conversation, uh, the shadow told him, uh, "You are me, and I am you. We are one." So, just a dialogue. Yeah. So this dialogue is the essence of our Jungian psychology and uh, Jungian psychotherapy. So that was the most amazing part uh, of this song uh, for me personally. Mm-hmm. Very well said. Thank you for that. Yeah, and I would like to uh, also mention that when we use the word shadow, most people think of the dark side, evil, the devil, but Dr. Stein points out that the shadow is also our unconscious narcissism, Mm -hmm. egotism, selfishness, envy, and Suga sings about all of those things in that song. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's a brilliant song, Suga, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, and so this book, I, I feel like I'm not, we're, we're 45 minutes or so in, and and I haven't even mentioned the book yet (laughs) and your work as a translator. Uh, so Chiron publications, um, published four books in their map of the soul series. Mm -hmm. And you mention in, in your, so you translated the fourth volume, which we'll get to, but in that fourth volume in your Japanese translation, which is being released today, I've seen two different dates as the release date on the publisher's website. It says May 24th, <laughs> but then in other places like on Amazon Japan, it's May 26th. Yeah, that's it. Well, uh, you know, uh, the the fact is that uh, the publisher uh, have has shipped okay. the whole copies of this book today. Okay. Okay. Twenty uh, fourth yeah. May, and they they will arrive at the bookstore or mm. the Amazon site at from twenty uh, six. Okay. So, Got <laughs> it's it. A bit complicated. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, I forgot where I was going with this, but uh, there's this yeah there's this whole afterword that you wrote that you added. So just for background for listeners who are not familiar, you mentioned that you were talking to Dr. Stein about Jung's Map of the Soul, his book, which was originally published in 1998. Yeah. Uh, you, He asked you, actually, do you think that that book yeah. is a little difficult uh, for the younger generation to understand? Mm-hmm. Uh, for ARMY, uh, all the armies all over, uh, we're buying this book because Jung's Map of the Soul has been translated into many, many languages. Mm-hmm. And he asked you if you thought maybe it was a little too difficult for the younger generation to understand. And so what did you say? Yeah. Uh, I said, um, yes, maybe so. A uh, little bit. Yeah. A little bit difficult. Because it's a that, heavy book. Yeah. Uh, I, I also told him that because that book is not just an introductory, right? it has depths. Yeah. So, so maybe uh, it's a little bit too difficult for them to read it uh, to and understand it. And he just said, uh, um, I see. Uh, all right, or something like that. But yeah. it seemed to me that uh, he was, uh, yeah, see, he was thinking uh, something very seriously. And the wheels were turning. Yeah. As we mm-hmm. say. Yeah, it, it was turning. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it got him so, thinking. Yeah. Well, sometimes I wonder maybe that was the moment uh, when Dr. Stein started. Uh, thinking about publishing another uh, book, especially for the armies. uh, For For army, yeah. (laughs) So what happened was that Chiron Publications, uh, Dr. Stein is the co-founder along with Dr. Schwartz Salant, the late Mm -hmm. Dr. Nathan Schwartz Salant, who was a guest on this program, uh, started Chiron Publications decades ago. 
-hmm. And then it was uh, acquired by doctors Bucer and uh, Cruz in Asheville, mm -hmm. North Carolina. And so Chiron published, uh, it started off with Map of the Soul Persona, a paper, a small paperback book. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are, I'm just looking here at the table of contents, there are 13 chapters and it, uh, is that true? Uh, yeah. And um, it includes some of the, uh, the dialogue that Dr. Stein and I had uh, in, mm -hmm. in uh, the episode about that. And then yeah. they followed it up. Yeah. With map of the soul shadow and then map of the soul ego. So mm -hmm. that's three books. And then they decided to come out with uh, a, a, an all encompassing volume, which is the fourth volume, which is the one you translated. It's titled map of the soul seven persona shadow and ego in the world of BTS. And it, I was asked if it included everything that was in the first three volumes. It doesn't include everything, uh, it, but it does include sections on persona, shadow, and ego. Um, there's also, actually the first chapter is BTS and the number seven, uh, because we didn't know if they were gonna release an album just about ego, just about shadow. Instead, they did Map of the Soul seven. Uh, and there, so it reviews the main points in each of the, mm -hmm. the first three volumes. Okay. And then there is a, uh, the last chapter, chapter 12 is concluding thoughts written by psychiatrist, Dr. Leonard Cruz on mm -hmm. music being the universal language. Okay. So mm -hmm. with all of that background, I'd love for you to tell us how you came to translate that book into Japanese. Yeah, I see. And um, well, actually, uh, it was the publisher uh, who found me and asked me to be the uh, translator of this book because the editor of that so Genshin knows. Uh, yeah, she noticed that uh, that Japanese student could be me. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So that's the reason why she uh, asked me and yeah, she, she, she asked the very same question <laughs> as you. Yeah. She asked me, are you this Japanese student? Mm -hmm. I say, yes. And are you, she say, also said, are you interested in uh, translating this book? And I say, yes, because I, yeah, I have, a, I had already read this book and I found it very interesting. Mm -hmm. And it is not just a, uh, you know, uh, the present uh, for only for the armies, but it is also interesting as an introductory book yeah. uh, uh, for a Jungian psychology. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's so, a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I like this book, especially uh, it, em it uh, emphasized our, the role or the importance of the ego. You know, there are many books about written about uh, you know uh, the shadow, you know, the persona. Right. But there are very little book uh, which focused on the theme of ego. So, yeah, this book uh, write uh, many things about ego, what the ego means, and uh, the role of ego. So, yeah, I believe that's the beauty of this book. So that's. And as a reason why I, I decided to uh, to be the translator of this book, and and just uh, I'd like to make the point that as Dr. Stein mentioned in uh, our episodes together, uh, Jung's concept of the ego and that term ego means I, the yeah. I, not an inflated ego. Mm -hmm. So this sure. is this is the Jungian term ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you were approached to translate this book because you are a also a professional book translator. <laughs> yeah, and I would mm -hmm. like like for you to tell us about that because you've translated some really big, heavy books. <laughs> Three of Young's and Otto Rank and uh, Ferences. So mm -hmm. how did that come to be? 
Well, <laughs> well, actually, it started as uh, just a personal uh, interest. Uh, maybe I can say hobby. A hobby? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just love to translate a foreign mm. language into Japanese. And uh, before I became a professional uh, translator, I used to love to uh, translate uh, unpublished, untranslated text into oh. Japanese for my personal purpose. Now, translate from which language into Japanese? Well, uh, German and also the English. So you know German well enough. To... Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Where did well, you learn German? Yeah, at, at the university, you know, mm -hmm. and also I have to say that uh, to study Jungian psychology, uh, we need to uh, learn uh, something about German. Yeah. You know, because uh, he's, uh, you know, of course he wrote mainly in his own mother tongue, German. Jung did, language. yeah. Yeah. And sometimes uh, the terms uh, Jung used in German can't be yeah. translated into foreign language. For example, the, one of the most important term of Jung's, uh, Jungian psychology is uh, German, die Zere. Hmm. Die Zere is almost impossible to translate into uh, other language. Yes, it's similar to soul in oh. English, and we have a similar uh, translation in Japan. But, uh, you know, soul, English soul and the German, die Zere, is not exactly the same, con same mm. concept. Would so, you spell that word? Zere? Yeah. Uh, S-E-E-R-E, die Zere. And it loosely translates to soul, something yeah. like soul. <laughs> yes, it's very close to the soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you translated uh, some of Jung's books, and how long does it take for you to translate a book, say, uh, Dream Analysis? How long did that take? Long. <laughs> well, uh, about, uh, you know, the, the books about the dream analysis is a Japanese original uh, edited book. Okay. As I picked up uh, seven papers on dream psychology, or the dream analysis from Jung's corrected work. Okay. Uh, in German, Gesamme at Belke, and translated and put it into a one single book. Oh, okay, so you created that book. That's not his two volume set dream analysis. Yes, exactly. And okay. um, well, actually, um, uh, uh, there are several papers, two or three papers uh, of that book. Uh, well, I I had already translated it uh, when I was a college student, I believe. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. now, of course, it was a rough uh, translation, which mm -hmm. can be published. And I translated it again and again throughout my okay. professional career. Mm -hmm. So there are two ways to answer your question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it takes uh, almost mm, almost one year, probably, yeah, yeah to f to finish the whole process, not just translating, but also the proofreading work requires right. some time. But also, I can say it required more than. Uh, 15 or 16 <laughs> years to <laughs> complete the whole works. So, 15 or 16 years for yes. <laughs> to complete. Well, yeah, to complete the whole uh, the translation work, especially about this book. Of I'm sorry, which book are we talking about? Yeah, uh, the, the uh, uh, Japanese original edition. Okay, uh, of uh, Dream Analysis. That's exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this book, mm -hmm. how long did it take you to translate Map of the Soul 7? Well, actually, it, it didn't take so much. Uh, uh, I believe it uh, three or four months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 you translated it from the English? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's 191 yeah. 
no, about 200 pages mm -hmm. and it took you a few months. And yeah. yeah. And I would like to talk a little bit more about what you wrote in the translators afterward, not to give too much away, but it's so good that oh. I would love for you uh, to tell the listeners uh, some of the points that you make about, I mean, circling back to when you found out that BTS was I mean, selling Dr. Stein's book. So we really don't know the full story where they did all the members read the book. Mm -hmm. Did some of the writers read the book? Uh, how were they influenced by Dr. Stein's book? We don't know. But you mentioned that it's commonplace, really, for musicians and artists to draw inspiration from books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but in many cases, it just doesn't, translate they'll they'll pick out a word you know and and it it, it fails to the the artist kind of fails to embody the essence of it so tell us how that you see that that's not the case with bts that they really did mm -hmm. embody these themes well uh well, that's, that's another <laughs> big I mean, question. I know that you gave us that example of inner yeah. shadow, but yeah. you mm -hmm. make such great points in this in this afterward that um, that I was really moved when I read this. Um, mm -hmm. Well, BTS moves me. I'm I'm very touched by them. I've oh, seen so them much. in concert. Yeah, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I I saw them here in Chicago. I went to two shows in Los Angeles last year, and then mm -hmm. two shows in Las Vegas this year. And I just get more and more impressed by them, and fall deeper and deeper in love with them. Mm -hmm. Also, I went back and watched all of their docu series, and this theme mm -hmm. of some Jungian theory was with them, it seems, from the beginning. And a lot of ARMY pointed that out to me, um, but I just hadn't done the research. And now I can see it. Mm -hmm. So what what did you say about how BTS being, being inspired by this uh, is different from other artists? And, you know, you mentioned how, um, you know, lots of, lots of people um what did you say here that there are countless artworks around the world that claim to be inspired by jungian psychology but if you yeah. ask me to mm -hmm. pick up something that can compare to map of the soul persona and map of the soul seven yeah now i see what i can say and um you know the songs the songs of bts can uh uh can convey the meaning of those concepts, you know, not only the intellectual uh, understanding, mm. but also the emotional yeah. uh, understanding of what persona is, or what the shadow is, or what the ego means to us. You know, for example, the very uh, first number of that album uh, uh, intro, persona. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we can understand how uh, the persona uh, means for him, Ali. Right. Yeah, he's a superstar, so he has a very attractive persona, and he is uh, also struggling with it. We can, yeah. yeah, imagine it. But yeah, this song can uh, convey uh, its emotional understanding, so so that we can. Uh, we can also uh, feel it in our own way. We have our own persona. You know, our persona is different from the one of Alem, of course, but we have persona. And we need to make it uh, stronger or attractive or, you know. And sometimes we have to struggle with the identification with that persona to make a distance between particular persona and uh, ourselves. So the theme that LM is uh, expressing in that beautiful song 
it's not uh, just about him. It's also right. about us too. Right. So that's the beauty of the uh, song and also the other songs of BTS. So I believe that's the differences uh, between the BTS and the other uh, products. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Stein goes over uh, each song mm -hmm. in, in these books uh, and is working with the translated lyrics. And so you make a great point uh, that it's not just them using a word, mm -hmm. uh, one of Jung's terms for the title of the album, but they really embrace the theme, yeah, the, the theory, I should say, of what that word means and how it, they're living it, how it applies to them. And they're, the thing that I love about them is that they share so much of their lives with us, not just their outer lives, but their inner lives too. And yeah. that's why they touch me so deeply mm -hmm. is because they share their struggles and their pain and their doubt and their, their issues. And mm -hmm. they, and you can see that in these docu-series and I will have links to all of them in the show notes for this episode. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I, I connect with them so deeply so I was wondering if there's anything else that you would like to tell us. I know I've done a lot of talking yeah. <laughs> else you would like to share with us. Well, we wrap up? well, Laura, may I uh, read the translation of the final, final thought of the Japanese uh, afterward, yes. uh, translators afterward. Yes, please do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry. It is just a rough translation, but uh, I believe it can convey the a spirit. And I said, needless to say, BTS, Map of the Soul, Persona, and Map of the Soul 7 are the completed artworks in themselves. You can understand how uh, wonderful uh, they are without reading this book. I mean, Map of the Soul 7 book. However, if you study this book, you will realize that what the BTS is expressing in Map of the Soul Persona and Map of the Soul 7 are also meaningful in your own life too. And it will help you to love the music and videos of BTS uh, even more deeply than before. This book is a sincere gift from Jungian psychology to BTS and the precious army. I do hope you enjoy this. Serious book. That's really beautiful. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, as we wrap up, I would just like to mention that you are also translating another book of Dr. Stein's. <laughs> Can you tell it. us uh, about that? Well, uh, it's a more uh, uh, technical or uh, specialized mm -hmm. book, uh, which is called uh, Outside, Inside, and All Around. I believe uh, it is uh, Dr. Mary Stein's uh, latest uh, corrected works. And this book's focused uh, on uh, many important uh, Jungian concept, uh, uh, like synchronicity, transformation, or individuation. So it's uh, this book is more uh, specialized uh, book, and it will be published in yeah, I, I have already finished translating it and actually uh, uh, I am in the middle of a proofreading work. Okay. You know, the final checking <laughs> process. <laughs> and it will be published in July, I believe. So In July, you, by the same publisher? Uh, no, no, another publisher. It's called uh, Misuzu Shobo. Yes, and that is who pub, uh, published in Japan the other books you translated that I mentioned earlier, the books mm -hmm. by Young yeah, that's it. And, mm -hmm. and Otto Rank and uh, France. So mm -hmm. I also mentioned that your, um, your training as a Jungian analyst is expected to be completed next year. And mm -hmm. are you writing a thesis? Yes, actually, yes, I am struggling with it. <laughs> You're struggling. That's a good thing. That's a yeah. good thing. Would you tell us what it what it's about? 
Well, uh, unlike the uh, other, you know, uh, institute here in, uh, you know, uh, Switzerland or United States, I believe, uh, we need, in Japan, we need to write several thesis, not only the book one uh, thesis, but the several thesis. You need to uh, write several theses? Yes. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, uh, on one uh, paper, I will write uh, the archetype of wounded healer, Mm. which is a very important uh, 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 concept of Jungian psychology. And the other one I will write about the Japanese culture of tea ceremony. Do you know something about it? Tea ceremony. No, I don't. <laughs> we have a ceremony, uh, uh, especially for drinking, just drinking tea. <laughs> okay. And so, you're looking at that from a psychological perspective. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That's, uh, that's very interesting. <laughs> so you are practicing there in Kobe and you are available. Uh, you have openings for clients. If anybody yeah. would like to get in touch with you, you yeah. do have a beautiful website. I will provide <laughs> a link to that in the Thank show you. notes for this episode. Yes. And you, uh, we will keep in touch definitely. And I was just looking to see if there's anything that I left out, anything mm -hmm. else that you would like to mention about mm -hmm. BTS or this mm -hmm. book uh, as we close. Mm -hmm. uh, well, before, uh, before we end, uh, may I uh, say something in Japanese? Yes, please. Did I was I hoping you would. Yes. Uh, to 日本の皆さん、あの、どうもこんばんは。あの、楽しんでいただけたら嬉しいです。あの、後で相談しようと思ってるんですけど、これあの全部英語でお話をしましたので、あの、伝わりにくい部分もたくさんあったかと思います。何